Ah, oh, look at these plants in my hydroponic grow garden. I have here a nice head lettuce that is forming. And then if you go in the back, you can see my romaine growing nice and tall. Here's another romaine here in the middle. I even have some spinach here in the front. And a couple other lettuce plants here, even one in the back. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? But there's one thing wrong with this tray. Can you tell what it is? Hello, I'm Christy with GreenLivingOffGrid.com and today I'm going to talk about the top five mistakes people make when they're growing with hydroponics. The first mistake is insufficient space. One advantage we have when we're growing hydroponically is the ability to be able to put more plants in a smaller footprint, a smaller space. Now why does that happen? Well, unlike standard soil growing, hydroponics utilizes the ability to suspend roots in water with nutrients so that the plant doesn't have to expend so much of its effort growing the root base to be able to find enough water and nutrients. So since the plants don't have to produce as many roots, the temptation is to pack more plants in your grow unit then you have enough space for the plant's green growth to develop. Such is the case with this grow tray. As you can see, I have it packed pretty full with lettuce and spinach. And in many cases, as in the one right here in the middle, that plant is not able to be able to get enough light because all the plants around it are crowding it out and not giving it enough space to be able to develop into a nice head of lettuce. The second mistake that people often make when they grow hydroponically is not providing enough light or not providing the right kind of light. This is often the case when you buy those little grow light strips. Many of those grow light, flexible grow light strips or little flexible grow light wands only produce around six to 10 watts of light. And most plants need a minimum of 32 watts of light per square foot of garden space. So if you're going to grow your plants solely with the little LED light strips, you need to make sure that you buy enough of the strips to be able to provide a minimum of 32 watts of light output per square foot of your garden space. The third mistake people often make when they're growing hydroponically is growing at the wrong temperature range for the plants. Lettuce and spinach like a cooler temperature range, but a lot of your summer crops like squash or tomatoes require a much warmer temperature to be able to produce the fruit that you want to get off the plants. I tried to grow tomatoes in the house one time and I had a lot of these daylight spectrum lights providing enough for the green growth, but because our house was not warm over the winter, the plant never flowered or produced any fruit in the house. It wasn't until it warmed up outside and I was able to move those hydroponically grown tomatoes out to my greenhouse system that they started flowering with the heat and the light of the sun. The fourth mistake people often make is nutrient imbalance. You have to know the nutrients that your plants need in order to get the proper growth that you're looking for. Tomatoes, for example, need a higher level of nitrogen when they're in the growth stage than when they're in the fruiting stage. I have here some tomato fertilizer. As you can see, the 4 stands for nitrogen, the 18 stands for phosphorus, and the 38 stands for potassium. When I use this fertilizer on my baby tomato plants, I have to add a calcium nitrate supplement like this. This is a calcium nitrate supplement. 
It's a 15 and then 0, 0 for the potassium and the phosphorus. The 15 provides the added nitrogen and calcium that your baby plants need when you're using some of those formulas like the tomato formula I just showed you. When you add that 15 to the 4 on the tomato formula, it makes a 20 in that first number. And that's exactly what you need for the baby plants. But when you're ready to get fruit and flowers on your plants, you, we need to cut out the calcium and the nitrate levels and bring it back to the regular four that is on the tomato formula for nitrogen and calcium so that your plants will not put all its energy in the development of the green leaves instead of flowering. The fifth and final mistake that people often make when they're trying to grow plants with hydroponics is to use the wrong grow method for your plants. I have here lettuces and spinach in what is called a Kratky grow tub. Kratky is the method of suspending the roots of your plants in the water and nutrients without any added aeration. This works well with lettuces plants because they're small plants and they don't need as much aeration to be able to produce well. And basically as crack heat method works, the air that the plants get between the space of the net pot and the water level is all that these plants rely on for aeration. But that doesn't work so well with some of the bigger plants like tomatoes. They do better in a deep water culture setup where you have air stones and aerators agitating the water at all times. Those root systems tend to be bigger and larger, and if you do not provide additional aeration, the plants don't often thrive very well. Another plant that can be temperamental is strawberries. If you try to grow strawberries in a deep water culture system or in the crack key method, sometimes the roots will rot. That's been my experience. They don't do very well unless there's a lot of aeration, as in an aquaponic system where there's a continuous flow of water through the pipes where the plants are planted. And you'll see these in a lot of the hydroponic aquaponic systems that grow strawberries. They'll have running water through these four inch grow tubes and they'll have the roots suspended in that running water at all times. And that seems to work well for strawberries. Another method that can work well for strawberries is ebb and flow. That's where you run the water into some kind of a, a cocoa core, which is like a dirt medium. And there it, for it emulates more of the soil grow system that you use with strawberries in a standard soil grown garden. So you can grow strawberries in an ebb and flow with cocoa core or you can grow strawberries in an aquaponic system that has a continuous flow of water and a lot of air for the plants and their roots. So that's it. These are the five common mistakes that people make when they're trying to grow plants with hydroponics. Number one, it's the spacing. Not allowing enough space for the green growth of the plants. Number two is the lighting, not providing it enough light for the plants or using the wrong kind of light. Uh, daylight spectrum works really well, as well as the red and blue grow lights. As long as you provide enough watts of light per square foot, your plants will do well. The third mistake that people often make is to grow at the wrong temperature range. Making sure that your cool crop plants grow at a temperature that they thrive at in the cooler weather or your warm crop plants like tomatoes, your fruiting plants, you need to make sure that there's enough heat for those plants to be able to produce fruit. Then the fourth mistake is nutrient imbalance. If you download my PDF report below, just click on the link below and enter your email address to be subscribed to our newsletter list and you will get a PDF on how to handle these mistakes, these five mistakes, and how to balance, properly balance your system with the right nutrients for your plants. And then the fifth mistake is growing with the wrong grow medium setup. So again, I appreciate you watching this video, and if you like a PDF of these five mistakes 
that people often make when they're trying to grow with hydroponics and how to correct these mistakes, download the PDF link below. And don't forget to check out our website at greenlivingoffgrid.com.